All right, so I woke up this morning and my house was ice cold and the heat was on. I checked the thermostat, everything was good. I checked the filter, the filter was good. Uh, and you can hear that, the igniter cut it on and off, which just means only one thing, that, that, that sensor, that igniter sensor, it needs to be sanded down or replaced. I replaced it last year. And it lasted me, it lasted me to this year. So that's a temporary fix, but anyway. There you go, I'm trying to let you be able to hear it so you can see what I'm talking about. It'll ignite for a few seconds and then it'll stop. That's what's causing it to blow cold air. All right, so the heat had been on all night and it said the inside 71, but the heat is on 80. So that's how I knew it was a problem. All right, first thing you wanna do is hit that kill switch. Safety first. All right, so I have three screws right here, right here, and another one on the corner. So you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver to remove all three of these screws. Let's go to work. It's really difficult to record and work on the furnace at the same time. So bear with me. I know it's gonna be a, a lot of people might be complaining, but I'm only one person. So just bear with me. All right, so now that the screws is out, I'm gonna pull this one down. And whatever you do, please make sure you separate the screws because they're different sizes. Well, the ones on the outside is the same size, but it's gonna be a screw you're gonna to have to remove from the flame sensor, which is different size, so be sure to separate the screws. And that's the bottom panel. In order to get this top panel off, gonna to have to just give it a little wiggle and pull on it. See, come right off. Alright, so when the flames comes out of the igniter, here's the, um, the flame sensor right here. It's in the back. You're going to need a flathead screwdriver for that. And you just you take out the screw, you disconnect the wire, pull the harness, I mean, pull the um, flame sensor out and replace it. Now, the temporary solution would be to just sand it down. To just sand it down. And it, like I said, it worked for a year for me. Really gonna need you a small screwdriver. And be careful not to, be careful with the wire so you won't unplug anything. All right, so I removed the screw. Like I said, separate the screw. And you just pull it up. Like I said, this is what the flame sensor looked like. If you can't find your flame sensor right away, then just sand it down. Sand it down. It worked a full year for me. Sand it down. Put it back, then order your part off eBay. Or if you could go to a hardware store and they might find it, whatever works best for you. All right, I don't wanna to talk too much, so back to the video. Just unplug that wire and swap it out. So gently pull it out, wiggle it a little bit as you pull it out. And like I said, that's what you sand down right there, cause that's what stopped the igniter. The igniter cuts on and off and it start blowing cold air through your vents. So if you wake up and you like, okay, the heat been on for hours and it's ice cold in here. And then you come down here and you hit the igniter, cut it on and off, then you know it's the flame sensor. Anyway, let me get back to the video. All right. So it's time to get out the new one. And all I'm going to do is plug back in the wire, put the, put it into the slot, put the screw in, and that's it. 
All right, so here's my old one, and here's my new one. Gonna match it up, make sure everything fits perfectly. Like I said, um, if you can't find this at a hardware store or anywhere near you, just get you some, some thin sandpaper and sand all of that off. That's what makes the igniter cuts on and off. So just sand that down. And I tried that before. I sanded it down, and it lasted me a year. Now it's doing it again, so I ordered this part last year. I ordered this part last year, so now I'm going to use it this year. I figured it was going to do it again. So let's get back to the video. All right, so I plugged the wire in to the new one. Trying to put it in here. So you just line it up perfectly, then put the screw in, and that's it. All right, so I'm putting the screw in now. Just hand tighten it, then just take my screwdriver and go over it. All right, so now it's time to put the panels back on. If you got a partner or got somebody that can help you, that'd be best. I'm by myself, so it's kind of hard to record and use this because you definitely need two hands to put this top panel back on on the furnace because it's very difficult. So I'm going to try my best. Okay, I got it. Top panel back on. No screws required. I just had to line it up and push it on up in there. Now let's put the bottom panel back on. Although I put the top on first, make sure the bottom one is behind the top. This little flap right here so you can be able to line the screws up perfectly. Get what I'm saying? It'll probably be best if you put the bottom one on first and then the top, the top holds itself up eventually and the bottom got the screws. But like I said, I'm, I'm by myself. I don't have a partner, so got to do what works for me. Now that all the screws back on, it's okay to go to that kill switch over here and turn it on. go to igniter. Like I said at first, you would hit a flame, igniter cutting on and cutting off, but now it's staying on, so that's how you know it was the sensor. But like I was saying before, the temporary solution would be to sand it down, the flame sensor. The permanent solution would be to replace it, but like I said, it, it's always good to have them. And there it goes. The heat is kicking on. Now, as you can see, everything is working fine. And that's how you replace a flame sensor on your furnace. Goodman Furnace. Hope everyone have a blessed day. Thank you for watching.